What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and it's my continued mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes longer filled with sponsored bullcrap. I buy a copy of every game, even if the dev gives me a code. So my hard-earned cash is on the line just like you. The first 1,000 people to thumb this video up will be faster than the 1,000 people afterwards. Blacktail is a game with a phenomenal vision for an ultra-tight audience. A game from Parasite and published by Focus Interactive for $23.99. Blacktail is a little bit like Indiana Jones, which is just Mikey's continued adventures for Goonies as an adult. It's a walking simulator with some shooting in it. A game that is a bit tight on its delivery, but tries to do a couple things special. Is that enough? Is that going to get you through all these hours? Let's discuss the starting. Blacktail starts with an introduction to a story that involves a girl from a small village that's been losing children to the dark forest around them for years. Turning inward in fear, the villagers see your character's deformation and the mask that she wears as a cover, a sign as that she's in league with Baba of the forest. This would be Baba Yaga originally, who, according to the legend, had a hut that danced around moonwalking through the forest on chicken legs as she kidnapped and ate children. It does all this through a first-person view. Offering shooting, puzzles, mystery, and deep storytelling as you explore the land, searching for answers to all these mysteries of not only what happened to everyone else, but what's going on in the forest around you, and also what's happened to you, and what's going to. Are you destined to be an evil witch taking on every dark idea that gets presented to you in the game, or are there many of them out there that you're going to fight for to keep a little bit of your soul helping out the woodland creatures and solving the puzzles therein? Blacktail is more entwined with American McGee's Alice, or The Valley, another title that I reviewed many years ago. It's a typical first-person shooter, a mystical look into a wonderland that has a lot more in common with ancient fairy tales. And trust me, this game makes Skyrim look positively dead when it comes to the wildlife, and there's a reason for that. Everything is moving. Quickly, you find yourself moving with them through the same forest, learning the game's systems, using your trusty bow, taking out enemies with power shots infused with the powers that you consistently feel growing inside you, as well as talking to all manner of weird creatures. The shack is here too, a mysterious home base that consistently judges the actions you do in the forest and has a haunting statue in the second level that just seems hell-bent on being creepy as possible, even if it really rarely does anything until later. Following your sister, who strangely sneaks out of the village before you, this is Yaga's hunt for her sister and uncovering some of the more mysterious incidents that have happened in the past. As you move, jump, and climb, controls are firing, discreet aiming, the ability to cast some spells, sneak, and sprint, as well as hide your bow and arrow, which is actually another element of the game that's used both as a situational awareness kind of element, but also in one or two more puzzle-like moments. Powers, new arrows, new spells. How does it come together? The best games are those that play to their strengths and either minimize or have very little weaknesses. The game's occasional boss fight is a bit like running headfirst into brick walls. One thing that helps, though, is that almost everything is wrapped tightly into the fiction. For example, sticky arrows can be found near the bee's nests, thick with old honey that can slow down enemies. And moving moment to moment within the game world itself and fighting those guys is fine. Blacktail is a little bit like a fever dream Disney movie, and that's when it's at its best, when it's just pushing you in in your exploration. For example, everything in the game is used in some double or triple kind of depthy way. Bows taking down enemies as well as apples to help out forested creatures. Or lobbing those honey-covered arrows into the paths of creepy monster gremlins who move way too fast for you to hit without slowing them down a bit first as they laugh and chitter in the bushes near you and occasionally throw what I can only assume is their crap at you from their hiding places. Most creatures are resources. Spiders can poison you, but you can shoot them and take their eyes to make potions. Each enemy type drops something for you to use. Level design, the game is set up in a series of paths, not unlike a God of War Light or other game with that style, with you moving, backtracking, and collecting items, and new locations thought impenetrable using a new skill, and consistently unlocking more about the story with flashbacks and cutscenes, or talking to an ever-present creepy voice that bounces around your head like a psychotic Pac-Man trying to eat your last bit of sanity. Just when you think you can't take any more, you can use a black cat as a teleporter. <laughs> yes, I said that. You can go back to the hut and upgrade your skills with all that you've done. Each is different. Some are more basic, like adding more health or mana. Others add hexes you can use against particular enemies. Both good and evil-based hexes abound. Because every action that you take reflects back at you, those are tracked, both easily noticed and less subtle. And to me, that's actually one of the places where the game really does work. Yes, it does tell you on a morality meter exactly what you've done, some skills that you can or can't use, depending on just who you have kicked the crap out of or helped in the game. But it always made me wonder exactly what I was doing. Was I doing something good? Maybe. 
but I wasn't always quite sure, and that mystery continues to move you forward. It also doesn't hurt that the game looks pretty incredible for what it's trying to do. Blacktail looks like an old Disney cartoon, a survival fairy tale with every character, location, creature, and cave looking just askew enough that it's like seeing every warning your parents ever gave you about strange people and places coming alive at night. Even the open glades and the gorgeous vistas have this somewhat dreary feel to them, like it's just getting ready to rain or someone's waiting on the other side staring at you through the forest. Now, the scale of the game plays with you as well. As you sit down and talk the finer points of breaking souls, bones down in hell with some larva longshoreman who's just trying to keep the underworld looking good and running like a well-supplied port. It's those bits of oddity that add together into something special. Then next, you're going to be sitting down listening to three mushrooms discussing killing enemies that might not be enemies and snickering their way through a story that seems as shady as it can possibly be and mimics just that kind of main ingredient that shrooms grow best in. The atmosphere is always delivering something to you. One second, you're going to be fighting off goblins who are wearing their own best friend's bones as armor. Then you're going to be under the shadow of a giant rabbit skeleton spitting out a fountain's worth of water into a wading pool, and you're going to be wondering, what the hell's going on? The game has a couple stealth moments as well, but it is not a game based around stealth. It's more exploration. The bow and the various arrows, the spells more wrapped around unique uses in the game world to move you forward than stealth actually allowing for you to take out enemies. Venus flytrap, like plants, capture birds that fly by. And if you shoot them, they both die, but it leaves you feathers for your arrows. Or you can just let them go and try your best to find feathers later on. And the game's just consistently bending those ideas of what's going on and delivering that to you through the graphics. And nothing says more about a change up in graphics than the mid-game point, where you get a cutscene of Yaga's life in the village and a betrayal, as well as her reaction. It doesn't work perfectly, but it was such a profound sense of what is going on that I was sitting there thinking, Holy crap, man, that's awesome. That is, again, until you get to the bosses. There aren't a ton, but the game shows just how not of a full-on shooting game this is when you start fighting bosses. Luckily, there aren't a bunch, and they're not terrible. It's just a bit like grabbing a rally car and putting it on an F1 field. Dodgeball with lawn darts. It's fun until you get hit, and then everything just sort of goes to hell. Performance here, thankfully, does not. Because if this was mired in poor performance, I think it would really hinder what they're trying to deliver. Performance-wise, the game runs spectacularly well with full DLSS support. And while it doesn't have a ton of options, each does have a good number of steps up and down the dial that you can change it to. On a 2080 Ti, 1440p to 4K is possible. And 1080p with lesser powered cards is going to be very easy, adjusting for whatever small changes you want in the game graphically to get the FPS that you do want. Now, I still wish more games parsed out their special effects into their own sliders. I'm going to talk about that at the end in the rating section because the game has some really cool post-processing effects I like that are mixed in with ones I hate. And this resolves in that love-hate moment where you're like, dude, seriously, just let me actually separate all of these. Now, there's one aspect of the game that is unique to me, and that's the voices. I got to say, first, they're excellent. Every one of them, odd in their own way, but really well done. It's just that, as I said in the preview, everything here has that Alice in Wonderland vibe to it, but somehow they also mixed contemporary approaches to some of the vocals, transitioning from fairy tale to smartphone back and forth communication styles when it comes to the language used. Some of the voiceovers and verbiage sound like they're from reality shows on TV right now, while the rest sound old style and a bit more expected. Who are the actors here? Well, there's actually some really cool ones. Valerie Rose from Edith Finch and Wolfenstein Youngblood and a couple other surprises do their best, as I said, and it continued to grow on me. More of a mystery when the modern mixes into the medieval than I expected. The music itself is much more of a classical expectation, and there's not really a lot of change-ups here. Does it elevate the story or just ride along with it? I would say a little bit of both, but probably more of a ride along. The music here is excellent. It continues in more traditional styles, full instruments, creepy, macabre, and at times tilting to almost childlike teetering, especially when it seems to be enjoying laughing at you and what you're trying to figure out and a bit of that mystery. I loved it for its oddities, and while it didn't surprise me, it did build on what was already there, which is an otherworldly, normal-looking world trying to pretend it's not our world. Sounds confusing, right? At times it can be. But the music is a good, solid foundation that sort of pulls you through all of it. And I gotta give a big shout out to the devs for a couple things when it comes to sound. This is interesting to me. The first is when you're out of arrows and you fire the character, they dry flick the bow, giving you this audible feedback if you aren't paying attention to the hub or you're doing something else in the game world. A small thing, but it's just one more element that isn't in your face. Additionally, the fade in and out of faraway sound effects and voices 
is perfect. With you hearing arguing characters or the cough of an underworld insect pushed to their breaking point trying to get your attention, filtering through some trees. 3D audio is also really well done with the sound of bees above you and ready for you to leave them a tit for tat sacrifice to get a reward. All of that is really excellently done. But how does a walking simulator with some combat moments offset by a couple poor boss fights come across, especially across these different hours? That's the surprise to me for Blacktail. And that comes to the fun factor. You have to come into this game with a particular thought in mind. Even if you choose the normal difficulty, the combat isn't exceptionally hard, nor is there a great deal of it. But the exploration and the storytelling is. I never knew who the bad guy was, or at least for a long time. The story's constantly throwing little tidbits at you. That's my jam. That's the thing that brings me excitement in these kind of games. Some games offer consistent mechanical upgrades. Others offer huge worlds to explore. Blacktail does neither one. It offers a unique world to explore, a consistent mystery, and a story that's unlike almost anything else out there, but it does have some flaws. When it comes to the fun, it was enjoyable to me. The exploring, finding just more one weird creature to talk to, or smashing down an ant infestation after I refused to take the queen's bargain, helping out some creatures, but then feeling I really needed to take a darker turn to keep me engaged throughout the entire game, right up until the end. But there's no mistaking, the game can be clumsy, the boss combat isn't great, and the midsection moment is stunning in its surprise, but also feels added in instead of integrated into it. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. At this price, I think it's pretty easy to be negative, especially at some point you have to look back at these line of cynicisms around all these games measured in the sweat of a million trolls greasing away behind their keyboards and think to yourself, what exactly are we getting here? Blacktail is something different. It's not a classic, doesn't try to be, though it is filtering a classic tale into today's game design. It's just that it's pretty comfortable doing what it's doing, warts and all. I do wish the combat was a bit more fluid in the boss battles, especially because it's so little used everywhere else. And when you need it, you're constantly controlling an RC car with a horrible range. But I think for the price, if you can get past those things, this game is well worth buying. It's not a title you can force yourself through. That's like buying a super small shirt because you want it to fit. At some point, that purchase is on you. But if you understand all of these elements and you can deal with some kludgy combat, there's a title here that at least has enough mystery that it can feel a bit like a palate cleanser compared to everything everything else we've got this year. I enjoyed Blacktail a great deal. I enjoyed Valley and some of these other games that play somewhat like this. Their strengths aren't every part of their game, but what they do end up delivering, at least if you're expecting it, can be an awesome tight little mystery. As always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down and subscribe. Hit the notify all bell. It helps with this algorithm being as creepy and weird as it is. It's more of a mystery than Blacktail times 10. No one really knows exactly what's going on. That absolutely helps the channel. Check out the patron, buy some merch. Peace out. Enjoy the rest of your week, and I hope you're getting some good gaming in. Not a very good day to be alive, I gotta say. All underworlds are rage. We all are protesting. Lost souls reading around. I should get back to work. Demons aren't going to make themselves, are they? I took my bow. Can't stand a second without a leash around your neck? How about you finally go down your own path? I... I just want to survive. And that's the cost.